So this is a um, uh, a quick video on some replica hand grenades uh, that I purchased from a um, the Military Odyssey, which is a militaria and vehicle uh, fair uh, in Kent, in uh, in England. Um, you can see here they are moulds of the M26 hand grenade uh, and they are uh, like a rubbery resin uh, mix. Um, I bought them because they were £15 a pop. They've got decent um, markings on them. Yes, the handle's a bit on the thick side. Um, and yes, the colour isn't great, but with a little bit of effort, a bit of painting um, of the fuse um, and the grenade itself, I think it could turn into quite a nice looking um, replica that would look good hanging off your um, your webbing um, for whatever period you're reenacting. For me, it's um, uh, Vietnam. Uh, but these are equally applicable for Korea uh, and World War II. Uh, I think the big thing is the lack of uh, a pin and ring for the grenade. You can see uh, here, sorry, here, there is a hole that doesn't go all the way through, so you need to drill it out. Uh, and when you drill it out, it means you can fit your uh, pin and ring uh, through it. The way that I did it is 2.5 mil drill bit. Get it so you go in, it starts going through, and then I come out, and then I go in through the other side. As a result of me going out through the other, uh, in through the other side, it means that for me coming through uh, one side and then the other and meeting in the middle, it means that uh, it will go through the existing uh, holes. What you don't want is to drill through and it come off at a funny angle and end up out coming any, any, uh, anywhere around here and not the hole. And then once you've uh, done that, get yourself your hand grenade pin, and then it's push fit, and it's just a bit on the tight side, but that's what you want. And there you go. That is hand grenade pin installed. And then when you're all done and dusted, you can flare the pin out. Uh, it would need to be trimmed down a little bit uh, but there you go uh, i've done two already as you can see here i just need to do uh, the other two Join me for part two in a second or so where we look at painting uh, the grenade to give it that more realistic finish. Before we go into painting, I just wanted to show you the comparison of these uh, other replica ones that um, I purchased. As you can see here, as with my other video, this is a resin body with a metal, metal fuse uh, and release lever um, and it all screws together. You can see here the very similar markings. You can also see from a size perspective that it is equally uh, similar. We tally up the 
fuse. So it looks like it's been almost like a direct cast. What this does do, uh, though, apart from demonstrate the difference between a 25 pound uh, replica hand grenade um, and a, in fact, I got these reduced to 10 pound, actually, a 10 pound hand grenade uh, is just basically the color. Um, and like I said, we're gonna start painting these up to make them look more realistic. So painting, um, I'm gonna try uh, Olive Drab Base by MIG Acrylics. This is model paint uh, for your little plastic model kits. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be any good, but if we compare it, I don't know is the honest answer. So if we get some on the brush and then apply it. Now, because these are acrylics, these will dry um, quite quickly, hopefully. And these are for airbrushing and painting. Um, and I've decided to use a paintbrush uh, on it. You can see that it goes on quite thin. So several coats will be needed. And I'm not being overly neat here because I have to paint the fuse silver, which I will do, but let's get um, a base coat of this on first. See, I've shaken it a little bit longer. Will produce a better result for the opacity of. Oh, yeah, that's uh, much better. If in doubt, shake longer. A rule I tend to apply for most things in life. I'm not too sure what I want to paint colour-wise. The um, fuse, uh, and equally, I don't know what I want to paint the lever. Uh, and whether I want to put uh, like a wash uh, 
on this uh, or not. But we, we shall see. So I will let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll have a look to see uh, if we've gone for the right colour or not. So on the second grenade, I'm trying um, US Olive Drab, uh, which is a slightly thicker paint to apply. And I'm gonna see if this is any better. debate of olive drab what shade of olive drab is right so that's the second one and as you can see there is a difference uh, in color between the two uh, and we'll come back when both of these are dry and see which one we like the look of a few moments later so uh, welcome back you can see the hand grenades in front of me uh, here's my original uh, resin and metal replicas uh, and you can see the color that they are and then you can compare that to uh, the other colors here um, you can see uh, that there is quite a difference uh, in variety of colour, which I'm not going to lose sleep about. Uh, to be honest, I, I like the um, the different shades of green uh, that you have. So I think moving forward, I'm going to keep the colours as they are. Um, what I'm doing here now is painting the fuse part, which is uh, in a gunmetal grey. Um, you need to keep the coat quite wet and all I'm doing is just painting it on like so. I think to see um I think when you look at these close up they clearly aren't the real thing um but what I would say is how close are people going to get to your equipment <clears throat> be it what you're wearing as part of your uh, your webin webbing or whether it's on a <coughs> military vehicle the, the reality is that people aren't going to get up close and personal when they're looking at the hand grenade so I'd suggest that anything over a foot away they'd be hard pushed to tell that these grenades were uh, fake I'm not going to be uh, equally. I'm not going to be uh, overly neat. I'll be neat where it counts. <coughs> Excuse me. But I mean, these grenades were crudely painted and assembled, so they're not going to have this perfect uh, finish to them. I'm also in two minds about whether. I put the yellow line on, which I can do, um, but we'll get this stage done and dusted first, 
and see where see where that takes us. So, uh, that's that done. Uh, I'll start recording again uh, when we go uh, to the final stage. A few moments later. Uh, welcome back. I've decided to paint the yellow stripe, uh, which I've started doing on these uh, grenades. Uh, I've used Bellagio medium yellow and at the moment a bit of white to thicken up the uh, the mix the, the rationale behind thickening up the mix is that uh, yellow is quite a opaque color which is difficult and requires numerous layers so having a a, a, a white in there uh, just thickens up the paint it means it's easier to paint now I'm not going super neat on these because they weren't applied with a degree of perfection uh, in mind. They were applied, if you think about it, probably by dipping it in yellow paint. Um, so you have the grenade in your receptacle and they just dipped that little tip in to get the yellow on it. Uh, feel free to comment if I'm wrong, but that's how I'd probably do it on a uh, an industrial scale. And then once I've done this and let it dry, I will put another couple of coats on. to get that yellow to pop. And then anything, any rough edges around the fuse can be touched up uh, when everything's dried. So this one here is gonna be the second coat and you can see the marked difference i'll come back when this is all dried um, with a couple of coats on it to show you what it looks like uh, finished. So whilst the um, yellow is drying, um, I'm just going to paint the uh, the lever uh, a green colour. Um, my reference photos. Uh, show this. It also shows it with a a, um, a black section here, which uh, shows that it's um, been rearmed. I think.
once again as all I'm trying to do here is just keep the edges nice and neat But you can see the moulding process where that's it's not fully moulded properly. Which is you know there's 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 nothing you can do about that. Um well I suppose there is really, but it's just whether you want to spend that sort of time and effort into correcting all the little inaccuracies of this grenade that's just going to be a very small feature um, the colour that I'm using is some USA uniform from Villaggio uh, and some dark rubber to just take the edge off the crispness um, couldn't find a suitable paint uh, that was metallic that would maintain the realism of the lever and what I mean is here, oh, actually here's a prime example of the painted lever with the black or the bare metal uh, lever. These are genuine levers, by the way. So, in the absence of being able to recreate accurately that that bare metal look to a good standard, I've uh, decided to um, paint them. for this to dry and then I'll film painting the black putting the pin in but I don't know whether I'm gonna put a bit of a wash uh, in these to tone down the yellow a little bit uh, we'll see uh, my natural inclination is to let it dry properly and then utilize the dirt and dust from my garden and rub it in uh, to give it that sense of realism but yeah, watch this space. A few moments later. Right, uh, we're back. The green is sufficiently uh, dry enough for most of these for me to add the uh, black mark. Let's... Uh, not lose sleep over how neat it is. see how crudely these were painted so we'll let these dry and then once they're dry I'll neaten up with some gunmetal paint the fuses but that's it done 
So uh, here we are. This is the finished article. Uh, you can see the um, resin and metal replicas at the back with the real uh, lever arms. And then the um, resin, rubbery resin, I'm not too sure what it is. It's a, a, a rubbery material uh, molds of the hand grenades at the front. Uh, I've done a little bit of weathering uh, around the top uh, of the uh, the fuse to give it a little bit of depth to make it look like it's screwed on rather than moulded in. But apart from that, I mean, you followed me on the journey of painting them. Um, what I've decided to do is uh, these four will go on my uh, webbing. Uh, and then the three at the back will go on my Jeep. Um, I've chosen that way is that I don't mind losing <laughs> one of these, which basically cost £10, about £12 US dollars, if I'm running around uh, or it just falls off whilst I'm doing something. Whereas these were a little bit more expensive at 20 odd quid. Uh, and they look a little bit more realistic uh, so I'd like to have these uh, with the Jeep. But there you go, a little bit of time and effort, a few quid on some acrylic paints, and you can get yourself realistic Mark II hand grenades. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. As with all my videos, if you've enjoyed the content, please like, share, subscribe and comment, and I'll see you later.